Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Never Any Backlog. I am your host, Zach. And yeah, it's been a little while since I've been on here. Um, I, I promised you I have not been neglecting gaming. I've actually been playing Returnal on the PS5. Uh, I've also been playing... Uh, so Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance was re-released for PS4, Switch, which is coming soon, and I think Xbox. Uh, obviously, you can play the PS4 version on the PS5, so I've been playing that. Um, so that's been pretty cool just to kind of see that. That dropped on friday so may 7th 2021 so if you haven't seen it yet it's actually there it's 30 bucks um it's not i mean don't don't get wrong you're not gonna look at it and be like oh these graphics hold up well they don't uh, it's basically just a higher version assets but they're all very it's it's uh early 2000s but it's fun it's cool to see it you know it's it's neat that they did it they didn't have to do it so you know props to black isle studios and uh, interplay for doing that is really nice of them and it's fun to be able to do it there is no online play but the original didn't have online play either and like i said i think they just did this just to get the hype up for the new dark alliance so i mean i'm hyped i'm, I'm good to go i know it's different but i think it'll still be fun so uh, i've been playing that a lot and then also kind of what i want to do in this stream is kind of show you what i've been doing outside so i've been doing a lot of work uh job and kind of working with that stuff so been doing that. Uh, I did pick up uh, an electric skateboard. Oh, wrong way. Right there. So I've been trying to learn that since I've never skateboarded in my life, and it's very dangerous for me, uh, but it's been fun. And uh, oh, yeah, you'll notice that this computer monitor has been replaced with the CRT. Uh, the CRT has been, been replaced with that one, uh, primarily because the CRT was acting funky. Um, I think I need to get it looked at. Uh, I'm not throwing it away or recycling it. I'm, I'm going to get it repaired, hopefully, as much as I can. Uh, at the very least, I'll have to recycle it or something on. But uh, I do have this one. I am also building a new, well, a new for me old computer that is a Pentium 4. So that's a Pentium 3 down there uh, that runs on an NVIDIA 2 video card. Uh, the new one's going to run on an 8800 or a 9800, I think. Uh, I might actually drop it down to 8800. I'm not sure yet. Um, because I realized like the Pentium 3 with Windows 95 is good for a lot of my games that are in this binder here which you can't really see but there's a big binder here i've already shown it in previous episodes so make sure you check that out um but like all of these mid box games don't really run on a Pentium 3 that well um so i need to get a windows xp c computer so then i'll have a 95 windows xp and then obviously you know windows 10 gaming computer streaming computer and my kind of working on stuff computer so that's kind of what i've been up to uh it's been fun Definitely enjoying it. The weather's getting nicer outside finally, so I've been able to go outside a little bit more and, like I said, play around with the electric skateboard. And then the other project, which is what I want to share today, is what I'm working on now. Let's switch over to that real quick. Okay, so this is called NES Maker, and basically what it allows you to do is make Nintendo games. Uh, it's as cool as it sounds. It really is really cool how they do it. So, yep, there's the kind of the splash screen. If you've ever used platforms like kind of like game maker uh, it's very similar to that it's very easy to utilize actually um i really i really 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 like it i think it works super well actually uh there are amazing tutorials from the group that makes it as well um yeah so i just want to kind of show you what i've been doing uh, i've been doing the tutorials i just finished intermediate uh maze game or medium maze game and i'll be doing advanced next which allows me to do some custom coding um you know, it's, it's super cool. And like I said, I bought a flash cart as well to actually allow me to actually put these on games because I have a, a thought process in my head of two or three games that I actually want to make custom made. But the, the maze game templates really kind of give you a good you know, first impression of what to expect. So you can buy this from the new 8bitheroes.com. So there's the website. Um, it is very affordable, actually, for making a game. Oh, so it's $36. Um, you can buy that there uh, to go through PayPal. You'll get an email with the license and the download link. Um, these are the type, some of the type of games you can make. Obviously, you can make your own cart, buy your own cartridges. They provide all the stuff. So if you go to learn their website, okay. So they had like a Christmas special where they basically, you know, twelve days of NESmas where they actually make a game top to bottom, which is kind of cool. But they also have module tutorials. So like I said, I completed beginner. Uh, I've completed Intermediate, and now I'm on Advanced Next for a Maze game. They provide the asset packs, and I'll let you kind of manipulate it. 
Uh, they also have arcade style platformer, top down, scrolling, simple shmup. 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 Yep. Uh, Basic Brawler and Mega Metrovania, which I think is pretty cool too. So there are a few other ones that I'm going to play around with and mess around with, but basically my first game that I want to make is a maze game anyway, so this seemed like the perfect fit. It also uses uh, arcade aesthetics, which, I mean, pretty cool. I mean, you know me, I love arcades, so that was pretty fun that they included those. And uh, yeah, it's been really fun, and they have a really cool community where they share stuff, but the videos, like I said, they're very, very helpful, and they are updated too. Um, the host does a great job at it, and I think it's the same guy for all of it. Or he's, I think he's also the developer of nest maker as well so i highly recommend it um it's at 36 dollars you can start building nest games and then for the cartridge you go to infinitelives.com and here's the nest maker hardware tools and for 55 dollars you get the cartridge you get the chip that actually will plug into your nintendo and then you also get the flash card as well that actually flashes your game to it and you can do it more than once it's kind of like a you know flash drive so you can keep doing more and more um but yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's you know, and you can get new cartridges. So if you want to keep it permanently as one game, you can do such a thing and then print out your own labels and put that on there as well. Um, so really cool stuff. Like I said, it's easy to learn. Um, very, very nice company. Uh, very responsive. They they do they provide everything they need really well. And like I said, the games work really well. I mean, it is you're creating games for Nintendo, so don't expect like these amazing graphic animations. And there are limitations when you're building stuff. So just you know realize you're working with a Nintendo still. So there are limitations to what the council can do, and the, uh, therefore this will also limit it. But, you know, you can do some pretty cool stuff. So I'll show you kind of like what I've been doing. Um, like I said, this is the Maze Intermediate game. Uh, so I did mess around with it a little bit. These are basically your, uh, uh, I guess, your main screens, you'd say. So like if you go to one world to a new world, that's a new screen, essentially. Um, they have different things like I haven't learned yet. Like I haven't learned Underworld yet. Um, you can adjust your HUDs as well, which is really neat. Uh, you, you choose your uh, palettes because you know, obviously Nintendo's have limited color schemes. So like those are your palettes. And they, like I said, the tutorials provide you all the stuff you need to know. Uh, so there's your sprites. They actually provide the sprites, which they call uh, their sprites. And then you can obviously mess around with them. You can change their animation. So like, you know, idle down is standing down. But if I were to do run right and if i were to do play see how he's running because he's comprised of multiple frames basically and they teach like i said they teach you all of this um do it in the order that they have though so they have the beginner which basically they provide the objects already created and you're just kind of placing it and then he goes to the intermediate which is like okay well now that you've learned how to place it we're going to start a new project and this time we're going to provide the assets but you're going to build the assets moving and stuff like that so they do a really good kind of this gradual progression you're always making a new project you're not editing the same existing one um, but it really, it's a great tutorial. And like I said, they're not long. The first one's 30 minutes. So the second one's like an hour long, but they move at a good pace. Uh, they don't get confusing at all. I've, I've seen game maker tutorials that get confusing. Uh, it's nothing like unity. It's far easier in my opinion, or just easier to understand. Um, sound files, they provide quite a few of those. Uh, obviously you can do scripts. Uh, you can change all that stuff. So, and they also, so the intermediate one, they kind of explain like, what does, you know, what do these things mean? And these green text is like the help text of what what this means in the code. So it doesn't actually, this part's not actually part of the code. This is just explaining what the code does, which I think that's really cool that they provide these help tips. So you're like, okay, that makes sense. Um, and then obviously input editor. So this is what it would look like on the controller. And uh, yeah, so like I said, this is the one that I made. Um, go into the actual map. This is the actual first level. So you'll see like there's the ski balls, uh, aliens, they're actually backwards. They don't have smiley faces. Um, they're actually all facing that direction because the way I set them up as their initial default. Um, coins are worth the points. Cool arcades. And then this is the end screen. So this goes on to the next world. And this is where my character will start down here. And then go back to overworld. And then this is the second level. Uh, so less... Only one alien this time, more open. I removed some of the arcades. And you can swap stuff out, which I think is really cool. So, like, if I say, like, mm, I don't really like that color. Or let's see, I don't like that color. I'm going to swap that one out. I can go up here and click this and just go over here. There you go. Look at that. Easy. Because the paint palette's already here, which is really nice. And with the thing, and I can also go, like, say, if I'm like, you know, you'll notice I just put that purple in here. But I'm like, I want 
red one there. You can click on a different palette and see how it changes this. And this is how you offer kind of this differentiation on what the game looks like in different colors, which is really, really cool. Um, and then obviously we have a start screen. Oops, uh, start screen here. Uh, and you'll see like my character here, this is not actually here. It's just the way the game is programmed. So you'll see that. Uh, but you know, let's stop talking about, let's uh, show it to you. Show it to you live. Do it live. All right. So you should be able to hear that. It's not very loud. It's not meant to be loud. So let's make your tutorial screen. Like I said, they provide the assets. You'll see down here. Um, so first control, you'll see what inputs I'm pushing. It's cool. You can actually do both. So you can do first and second player. And yes, you could create a two player game. All the buttons here. Where is that one? Eh, 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 eh. Nope, nope. They're on random movement, so they won't necessarily track me down like Pac-Man. But they could. I mean, they could. They could hit me still. With the coins. All right. So obviously, I want to get to that gray tile. Now I'll show you if I die though, real quick. Uh, die. I'll start back down at the spawn point with all of the things, but you'll see at the top now, the lives go away. And fortunately, the score actually stays the same. And you could have, you could program it so the score goes away as well. So you basically, you know, it's kind of like a Dark Souls where you basically lose everything you'd had. You could totally do that. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. All right, well, I'll just go into the next world real quick before I completely lose the game here. I don't believe I have a game over screen set up in this game. If I go over here, so the green tile in this one is actually a checkpoint. So actually I'm gonna die here. Let's get reset the game. Uh, let me just show you real quick. So if I go back over here, oh, I did terrible my own game. That's how great of a game this is. Oh no. But anyway, so if I were to hit this now, this basically caused a checkpoint. And I could create an animation that's like a check mox or some type of animation. But now if you see, if I die, I now spawn it back at the checkpoint. And it's only if I walk over it. Now if I leave, me suck rules. And that's the end of the game. And they have like their own special thing. And then obviously it restarts. And you notice that like even when I restarted, it basically showed uh kind of those animations of like, you know, glitched out because that is how a, a game would actually run on Nintendo. So really neat stuff. Um I'm having a blast with it. And like I said, I just ordered the the ROM cart. So I'm going to actually try setting it up. Um, I have a couple ideas based on kind of things I've pondered for quite some time. And I was always trying to figure out like what platform I want to build it on. Like I was playing with game maker for a little bit. And I was like, mm. then I was trying unity for a little bit. Um, and then I was trying to do some other stuff like uh, visual basics, something like that like way far back on like the older computers to see what I could do. Um, because I want to create an older game, but I want to create an older game that's still accessible today that people could get it. And I think the Nest Maker is probably going to be the way to go overall. I think it's going to provide, you know, the forums so where I can share it, which is cool. It'll, a lot of people have Nintendos. And also, you know, I could put these in emulators, which is great. These all work. These just basically save as a Nest ROM file. So you could put them in emulators. And they can also get put into some of the cartridges work in like those universal uh, kind of third party knockoff consoles as well. So it allows me to share it and still be personal to me. Um, yeah, I think overall it's gonna be really fun. So that's kind of my review of Nest Maker. Uh, I highly recommend if you want to get into some type of game design that's not super complicated, maybe like getting your feet wet. Um, Thirty six dollars on nestmaker.com. Like I said, the videos are like I said, the videos are really really good. I go to real quick. They're hosted on Vimeo, which is nice. I go to like beginner, loads it up on Vimeo. Just gonna turn the audio off. Yeah. When I choose a different sub pattern, they basically walk you through everything. My tile so they do a really great job. And you can actually download them. So I actually download all of them in case I wanted to just save them to watch later on. Right here. So really, really great. And they also update their stuff too. Uh, if you go to their YouTube channel, they have a YouTube channel. It's like, hey, this is not the newest video. Go here for the newest video. So they, they stay on top of their tutorials. Um, it's, it is really, really well done. So I highly recommend it. If you haven't checked out nest maker, it's a really cool experience. I'll have some new games in the future. Uh, I will release them to the community. 
we will get back into uh, gaming reviews. I do want to do a few different things. I actually, now that I'm running on a Windows XP, it'll be streaming will be a little bit easier for myself. So I'll actually um, start streaming some retro games as well. And also, I'd like to start doing some console games as well. And I'd also like to do more, obviously, PC games from the backlog. So there's a lot of stuff that I'm trying to be doing here. Um, I will continue them. I do still want to do uh, Ricochet. I knew that's where we ended off with Valve Week. Um, and I still want to do Mod Week from all like the you know, Underworld and Stargate and all those. So those are still coming up. Uh, the Ricochet one did not work out exactly as I planned. I planned on basically getting all my friends together to you know, create this little server because it's 100% dead pretty much. Um, but that did not work out scheduling-wise. So I'm still working on that. Um, that will come in the future, so stay tuned on that one. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, I will try. I, I likely am going to change up the format a little bit. I know I was trying to do one a day, but honestly, when I do that, it feels like I'm rushing it, and it also feels like work. So I'm going to try to space this out. Maybe I'll do it on like a uh, Mondays and Wednesdays. I think that would actually work really well, um, just with work schedule, and also, you know, I don't want to give up my weekend either. Granted, don't get me wrong. Giving up my weekend to play video games is still a great weekend, but there might be times where I want to go camping or I want to go out uh, out in the wild or go spend time with family. And I don't want to feel obligated to let you guys down, but I also don't want to feel obligated to let my family down. So I think Mondays and Wednesdays would be great times. It would work really well for my schedule that way. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, you know, I, will, I will start being more disciplined to actually get back here i'm also going to try to do some new things with more interviews i know i still have emails from other developers i will look at your stuff i promise it's been a long period it's been a lot of changes in our life personally and uh, professionally so fun stuff all good stuff no complaints whatsoever uh, blessed my life which I'm, I'm grateful for and uh yeah, we'll get back into this. But yeah, check out, uh, if you want to make a Nintendo game, this is a great place to do it at. Um, they're very nice, and it's a really easy to learn editor. And like I said, it's not a resource hog, because you are playing Nintendo. So it does not take a great computer. And I actually think it works on Windows XP, too. So, you know, if you're working with limitations, $36, and you can start building some Nintendo games, and $55 for the actual cart, that's pretty cool. And I also think the cart uh, actually acts as a, a dumper. Which basically means if you have a regular Nintendo cart, you can actually put it on there and you can save it as a ROM. I'm not 100% sure this one does it. I know they sell those on the website because they also have ones that has like Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and I think even like Game Boy Advance and Game Boy. So if you have like the cartridge and you're like, I want to save the actual files for the games, I can put them in here and save them. Um, they do have that as well, which is really cool that they offer those type of things. So check it out. Yeah, the new 8bitheroes.com and I will see you. Next week is my plan. All right. Bye.